it's with great sadness and sorrow that I must start this video off with a disclaimer. If you're a fanboy, a fangirl, like this album, somehow didn't see the word rant in the title of this video, and can't handle somebody having a different opinion than you, or are watching just with the intention of trolling, just hit the back button now. It's going to do everybody, including yourself, a favor. Don't, don't listen to this. Just find another video where somebody sings the praises of the album, which is what you want, because that's not what's going to happen here. So here in 2016, John Petrucci released his first solo album called The Astonishing. And this is an album that typically I would just not pay attention to. However, there's one unfortunate factor. It has the fucking Dream Theater name written all over it. This should not have ever been a Dream Theater album. The style is completely different. The song structures are completely different. The mood and tone of the album, completely different. And the concept was all written by John Petrucci. This is all his work, and it should have been a solo album. But instead, because he knew that no one would pay attention or give a fuck, if it was a John Petrucci solo album, he knew the only way that anybody would listen to the shit is to put it out under the Dream Theater name. That's why there are so many 2000s era Queensryche albums. Jeff Tate, same, same deal. Now, where did they go wrong with this album? What happened? Where did they go wrong? Well, for starters, this is a concept album. That dooms the thing to failure right there in my book. I reviewed Queensryche's Operation Mindcrime, which is a phenomenal album, and would like to one day review Scenes from a Memory by these guys, which is, again, another phenomenal album. And I would say those two are easily the two best concept albums I know of. And I know somebody could say, oh, 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 what about this album or that album? Well, those two are my personal favorites. This just showcases all the problems that I talked about in that Operation Mindcrime review that I have with most concept albums. In fact, it actually goes way far and beyond what I talked about in that review. The album is, like I said, of a completely different style, has a completely different tone, totally different song structures from anything Dream Theater has ever done. Now, this doesn't have to be a bad thing. As I've been doing my Queensryche discography, I have been talking about how each one of those albums sounds different. And while I don't particularly love every single one, I can certainly appreciate a band going out there and doing something different and trying to not make the same album twice. I have absolutely no issues with that. But... They chose to go into a style that makes me think of rock opera or musical. And in some cases, it is Disney animated movie music. And it just does not work. These styles are not my cup of tea. They are not what I want to hear when I hear a Dream Theater album. Change can be good, but it can also be risky if you fail miserably at it. They also incorporate some orchestral stuff here and there, and it's not done very well. I think implementing classical style music along with heavy metal can work very well. If everybody involved knows what the hell they're doing and the people writing the music know exactly how to blend the two styles, it can work really well. It does not work here. This album is also largely piano and really Jordan Roots, I think is how you pronounce his last name, or I really don't know how to pronounce the guy's last name, but I can't stand his work with Dream Theater post Six Degrees, so it doesn't really matter. He's the featured player on here. There is way too much piano, and it's just awful. You've got some more circus music by him. Just about every song has some sort of piano section, and it's... It's just awful. Now, I like some piano-driven songs. By Dream Theater, no less. I can think of... 
I think it's called Space Dive Vest, if, I'm memory, if my memory serves me, off of Awake. Another Day off of Images and Words. And I want to say the song was called Through Her Eyes off of Scenes from a Memory, but I could be remembering that title wrong. If so, I apologize. Those songs were fucking beautiful. Amazing pieces of work. And God, even Disappear, I think, had a lot of piano in that from Six Degrees. And that one was also a very cool track. This shit is not. This stuff is awful. And there's absolutely... Well, I'll just say I get no emotion from this. Maybe, maybe it fits whatever emotional tone they were going for, but I don't get that at all of this. This album is also way, way too long. It is... Two discs, over 30 tracks, absolutely none of it is memorable. Two complaints that kind of have to be forged into one here. It is painful just to get through one disc of this shit fest, much less two. There are only three songs that are even somewhat tolerable, and nothing good on here. There's not one memorable guitar solo, no memorable guitar riff, no segment where I think to myself, oh, hey, that's really cool what they did there. No memorable chorus, no memorable segment of vocals, nothing. Absolutely nothing on here. Now, I will give one positive shout out. I appreciate the effort James Lipper you put into this album. I don't necessarily feel like he did the greatest job in the world, but I think he's also a very limited vocalist. I like him. I like his voice, but I, I think he doesn't necessarily do the best job on this album, but I feel like he tries. He tried to do different singing styles for each character, and I don't know if he was just told to do that by John or what, but I appreciate the effort that at least shows some thoughtfulness was put into this album because it doesn't feel like a lot else was. The lyrics are uninteresting, but then again, if I can't find a connection to the music or the vocals, then I'm not going to really pay attention to them. But there were, there were none that stood out to me in the two times I tried getting through this. Admittedly, I, I got so sick of the piano segments that there were songs I started skimming as soon as I heard piano to try to see if I could find something redeeming about it or just skipping it all together. There are also way too many ballads on this album. There's at least half the album, if not more than half of the album, soft piano-driven ballads. And they don't even change this up at all. If you're going to have that many ballads, at least make them sound different. Do, do, a, do an acoustic track where it's just John Petrucci on the acoustic guitars and James Lebrie on vocals and just do that. That would have been a nice change of pace. It could have been a very simplistic approach and could have really given the listener something to, different to listen to rather than just the same tired music over and over again. I mean, this album feels like one long song drawn out for over two hours, and again, nothing memorable nor interesting in it whatsoever. And what the hell is up with the song structures on this thing? Dream Theater has always been a band to put out albums with roughly 7 to 10 tracks an album, sometimes 11, but I don't even know if they've ever eclipsed 11 unless you count double albums. And they would typically fill up the album... It would range about 75 minutes, and that would be the album you'd get. And this is over 30 tracks. So there are no epics on here. There are no 12, 13-minute epics. Now, admittedly, I feel like Dream Theater goes overboard with that, especially on Train of Thought. And even on a couple of the tracks on Images and Words, I felt like they went a little overboard on. And they, they, have that, they have that tendency to want to show off a little too much at times, rather than showing off but keeping it within the context of the song. But on this album, it's over 30 tracks, and I think there's one song that's over seven minutes long, a couple that I think reach the five-minute mark, and the rest are one- to five-minute songs. And most of them are one- to three-minute tracks. 
And a lot of these tracks will have intros, boring ones no less, that will take about a minute and a half of that intro, of that song. And if it's only a three or four minute song, they're not leaving much room for the bulk of the song. It's like they've forgotten how to write good music on this album. I, I don't know what they were thinking. I don't know why they thought this album was a good idea. But whatever it was they were thinking, they should just stop it. I also mentioned that some of this sounds like Disney music. I can think of one song towards the end of disc one, which the chorus of it, the song itself was actually put together somewhat well. I think it was an over five minute song. But the chorus was so cheesy and happy sounding. It just, it just made me want to vomit. God, it was just awful. I can't remember the song title, but god damn. And a lot of this album, especially with all the piano in there, it does come across a lot as overly bubbly and happy. This is an awful album. I expected to rant on this more than I have. This was not a good idea. I kind of think of this like I do the Fuck You album that's under the Queen's right name, but it's really a Jeff Tate solo album. I think it should be removed from their catalog. And the worst, the absolute worst offense that this album would have if I were actually willing to buy it, I'm not willing to pay for this crap because it is awful. I will pay for quality, but not shit. If I were to purchase this album, even a couple of the okay songs, in my iTunes library on my iPod, it would take the top spot amongst the albums because they're listed alphabetically. So every time I scroll through my iTunes library, I come by Dream Theater and the first al an album cover I see is Awake. Classic album. No Dream Theater fan can deny that that is an awesome album. I see that album cover I, think, cover, I think, oh yeah, that's Dream Theater, awesome. But if I were to have a song from this album on there, unless I rename the album something completely different, the first thing I would see when I come by Dream Theater would be this shitstorm. And I would just get angry. This album literally makes me angry. It shouldn't. I shouldn't care. But when I expect a band to have quality music and they release this garbage... It just infuriates me. Now, I've re I have reviewed some bad albums on this channel. I reviewed a Smashing Pumpkins album, which came out a couple of years ago. I reviewed Death Leopard's self-titled album. I reviewed Inflamed Siren Charms. But the difference is I had no expectations going into those albums. I really don't even care. If Billy Corgan releases another album under the Smashing Pumpkins name, I'm not even going to care. It won't bother me one, one bit. I expect it to be shit, so when it's shit, not a big deal. You know, Def Leppard, I didn't expect anything out of that album. I Well, actually, I did expect it to be better than what it turned out to be, but still, I, I didn't have that much in the way of expectations of it. So, I, I didn't even really care about that. Inflamed Siren Charms, that band had been moving in that direction anyways. Now, granted, that was, at the time, what I thought to be an un unbelievably bad album. But, still, I, I didn't have the expectations I had with Dream Theater, especially after the last album, which was so good. I, I tell you this much, a lot of those albums... I can think of, I know I shat on Iron Maiden's Book of Souls, and I still stand by everything I said on that review. That's way better than this. Slightly shorter album, much better songs. Since I did that review, Tears of the Clown has caught my attention a little bit, and I appreciate that song more. I, I would actually be willing to give that a 5 out of 10, maybe even consider a 6 out of 10 now. Especially compared to this. That is a much better album than this. Inflamed Siren Charms? Easily better than this piece of shit. There were actually at least two or three songs I actually enjoyed on that album. And then the bonus tracks and it actually were not bad. Way better than this shit storm. I gotta finish my Queen's Rec discography. Hopefully I'll get to that. I also need to review Primal Fear's new album. 
which is all right. And Megadeth's new one, which I do quite enjoy. I plan on getting those done at some point in the near future. All of that is worth paying more attention to than this album. And if you're not a Megadeth fan, but if you're looking for a prog metal, look no further than Symphony X. Iconoclast is a fucking awesome album. I believe that's actually a concept album too, which if it is, then it would be right there with Scenes from a Memory and Operation Mindcrime. That's a fucking phenomenal album. Underworld, their newest release. Also, another amazing album. I would easily suggest, if you're looking for good modern prog metal, look at those two albums rather than this, or get anything by Symphony X other than this. I'm also open to suggestions of good prog metal. If anybody has any suggestions, feel free to throw them out there. I'm more than happy to listen to them. But this album, it just doesn't do it. So all that ranting aside, I figure I'll give a brief shout out to the few moments that I found to be reasonably passable. A Better Life, after listening to it a little bit more than I had at the time when I originally recorded this, He's actually not too bad. Of course, there's an annoying piano section, which wouldn't really bother me if this album wasn't dominated by piano, but since it is, that section kind of bothers me. But overall, I can separate this song from the concept and just think of it as a father promising his dying wife that he's going to give his son a better life. And I can appreciate that subject matter. And the song itself is decently done. A Life Left Behind is easily the best ballad on the album it has a few moments that are slightly interesting not really but it's still nowhere near the best of dream theater ballads even it's again just an okay song a new beginning this is the song i was talking about earlier that has the ultra poppy happy chorus it is kind of catchy and if you can get over the cheese factor the solo at the end is actually decent and it is one of the better put together songs, like I mentioned earlier. And Moment of Betrayal is actually a pretty decent song as well. Well, I say pretty decent, passable. I, I still maintain none of these songs are particularly great, but they're okay. And four somewhat okay songs out of 34 tracks is just ridiculous and a failure, in my opinion, as far as creating an album goes. I'm going to give this album a 1 out of 10. Originally, I gave it a negative infinity out of 10, but uh, it's been a few days since my original having recorded that and most of what you heard on this video. I'm going to be fair. Give it the 1 out of 10. It's still, like I said, 4 out, four out of 34 tracks. That is still embarrassing, and none of those songs are particularly great. If I was making a Dream Theater compilation, not one of them would even make it onto that compilation. This is a horrible album. If you're a Dream Theater fan and are considering this album, I highly recommend you listen to it first. You should be able to find it on YouTube, torrent it, do whatever you have to do to listen to it first. And if you're a Dream Theater fan, I would definitely say go ahead and listen to it. You should listen to it. You may not be able to make it all the way through it if your opinion ends up being the same as mine or several other fans, but you should at least give it a chance because a lot of people are liking it. So you never know. You might end up being one of those people. I personally don't. I'm giving it the 1 out of 10, that one point just being because of the four songs that I find to be somewhat tolerable. 